it's a really upsetting place but not at the beginning it seems okay it seems they've got over and then something really terrible happens really terrible yeah really terrible and we're plunging we see a different side of prudy it's it's um it's major tragedy this this season were you quite excited about having a different side of prudy in this particular series well actually i had a moan that i didn't have enough jokes and um uh and then the director said no you know we're seeing another side um a caring troubled troubled side because i've always seen her as the as the as the child of demelza and ross and so when they're arguing um she feels it very very deeply yet yet being a, a fully grown adult and in charge of the household she still sees herself as a as a youngster as a child i've always played her as a cross between a toddler and a lazy rat <laughs> so her emotions are very much like a toddler's emotions they're very immediate and and ever changing and the lazy rat well you know famously lazy prudy you know really you know, she has a she has a bum pad. We call them these. They put these big bum pads on our skirts, um, and she has one. So she's got a cushion attached to her body at all times. Um, she's always getting Demelza to do the work for her. So when you came to, to film, when you rather when you came to sort of sit down for the first time and have a, a read through of the scripts, what was the atmosphere like in the room as you realised what was going to unfold in the new series? Um, well, we'd had the death of. Um, uh, Henshaw last year um, where literally everyone in the cast cried at the read-through um, and the the read-through of the first few episodes this year because um, we only did the first few um, it, it was it was pretty sad did it feel um, more taxing this time around in terms of your your emotional state yes I don't think we've seen Prudy in tears um, so much before that's hard. That must be quite hard for you, given the fact that you say you see her as this particular type of character to suddenly have to break into that very difficult place. That was, was, that, was that kind of tricky? No, I'm a fabulous actress, what can I tell you? <laughs> and just finally, um, I noticed you're wearing your Era 50-50 badge. Um, it was, was, that, was that something that you have been uh, advocating for quite some time now? Is it something you suddenly feel like you can start shouting about because it's been noticed? No, I've been a supporter of Era 5050 since Elizabeth Barrington sent around the first email to some of us actresses. Um, and I've always said that I'm really, really lucky as a, a, a middle-aged woman to be working in this business, you know, to have employment. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, and we are 51% of the population and people need to be represented in the culture otherwise they disappear. So yes, I'm passionate about it. Have you noticed a shift in the last 18 months or so? Um, well, there was that m magnificent thing about Claire Foy and the, uh, the Crown and uh, the wonderful exec producer of that, Andy Harris, came to the launch of Era 5050 and um, he obviously listened and heard because I've heard that she's getting back pay, which is, um, you know, that's that's incredible.